Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, as uh, we're going to see here today, many members of religious minorities in Iran uh, are persecuted because of their beliefs, both uh, those religions that are recognized in the constitution in Iran and also those like members of the Baha'i faith uh, who are not recognized in the constitution. <coughs> Uh, today I would like to focus on the uh, seven former leaders of the Baha'i community in Iran uh, as their situation and the way they have been treated is the perfect example of the persecution that has been faced by all the Baha'is in Iran over the past over 30 years. Just a few weeks ago was the fifth anniversary of the imprisonment of the seven former leaders uh, of the Baha'i community, and um, their names are Ms. Mahfash Sabit, Fariwa Kamal Abadi, Jamaluddin Khanjani, Afif Naimi, Saeed Rezaei, Behruza Tawakkuli, and Wahid Tizfa. Uh, they were part of a coordination group uh, that helped to see the minimum needs of the Baha'i Baha in Iran, of the Baha'i community, things such as uh, marriages, divorces, deaths, um, which are really the most basic things a community needs. Uh, authorities imprisoned them five years ago and held them uh, in custody for over 20 months um, with very uh, severe limitations on lawyers and then sentenced them to 20 years imprisonment uh, on false charges. And these 20 years imprisonments are the longest uh, sentences given to any current prisoner of conscience in Iran. Uh, these seven Baha'is were really ordinary people living ordinary lives in Iran, just like any other Iranian. And uh, they were persecuted and denied even the most basic rights that a citizen should have uh, in a country, like all the Baha'is in Iran. For example, uh, Mr. Jamaluddin Khanjani, who is in his 80s and serving in very terrible conditions in Guhadash prison, uh, was once a successful uh, factory owner and he established the first automated brick factory in Iran, uh, employing several hundred people. And after the revolution in, seven, in 1979, he was forced to shut down this factory. And, um, and with that, as a result of that, many people were put out of work. And before his current imprisonment, he was actually arrested three times before because of his beliefs in the Baha'i faith. Uh, or Ms. Mahvesh Sabit, who is 60, uh, she was a teacher and a school principal before the revolution and was uh, also dismissed after the revolution from public education for being a Baha'i. And uh, in the most recent years before her arrest, she was involved in helping Baha'i youth who are barred from university, going to university in Iran. Uh, Mr. Behruza Tawakkuli, who is 61, uh, he was a social worker uh, who was also uh, put uh, out of work after the revolution and before his most recent imprisonment uh, he was arrested three years before and was harassed and jailed for months uh, without charge and spent most of his time in solitary confinement uh, and developed a serious kidney problem uh, as a result of his arrest. As I said, these seven uh, oversaw the needs of the Baha'i community and they actually function with the government's full knowledge. Uh, Baha'is don't uh, have clergy such as um, a mullah or a priest uh, and so they elect uh, councils known as national spiritual assemblies to take care of the community's needs and, so, and these assemblies comprise of nine people. Uh, and this is the case in countries all around the world, and it was the case in Iran, um, where after the revolution, the National Spiritual Assembly in Iran uh, were arrested, uh, they were abducted and disappeared without a trace. And although uh, their bodies have still not been found, they've, they've been presumed dead. And uh, after uh, this first assembly uh, were, were executed, uh, the Baha'is gathered again and elected another assembly. And that assembly also, again, were arrested and they were executed. And they elected a third assembly. By this time, uh, the Iranian government declared all Baha'i institutions illegal. And again, some members of this assembly um, were executed. Uh, 
As, as I said, the Baha'is, uh, the, the Baha'i faith is not recognized in Iran uh, as, as a religion in the constitution. And the Baha'is have been persecuted from the very early days of the revolution. More than 200 Baha'is were executed. Uh, hundreds were put out of work and expelled from university. Baha'i children are persecuted in schools. They're humiliated in front of um, other students, in front of their peers. Anti-Baha'i pamphlets are passed around in schools, and in some cases, they're also beaten. Uh, in 1991, a secret uh, government re uh, memorandum was found by a UN special rapporteur, uh, which was called the Baha'i Question, or Mas Ale uh, in, in, this, in this memorandum, uh, it was clearly stated that Baha'is should be treated in such a way that their progress be denied, be stopped, and that as soon as anyone is known to be, is is known to be a Baha'i in universities, to expel them from universities, uh, and to also expel them from their, from their place of work. Um, the Baha'i international community uh, recently held a campaign in support of the Yaran, uh, or the seven former leaders of the Baha'i community, and all the prisoners of conscience uh, in Iran. And uh, what was the most heartening about this campaign was the fact that so many people, uh, people from diplomats to dignitaries to journalists, religious leaders, and just um, people around the world raised their voices in support of the seven Baha'is and all the Baha'is in Iran, which really showed that, um, showed that, the, 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 that, that these people have not allowed the Iranian government to affect what, what they think about the Baha'is, that uh, they showed the Iranian government that they haven't believed in uh, the false charges that have, have been spread about the Baha'is, and that the Baha'is who are in prison in Iran, they're all innocent. I think that uh, the case of the Baha'is is unique uh, in the sense that it's, it's, it's systematic. It's a systematic uh, effort to really destroy the Baha'i community in, in any way possible in Iran. Uh, and this is proved by um, the several documents that, uh, that, that have been found by the Iranian government. Um, but there are also many groups uh, and individuals in Iran who are persecuted, both because of their beliefs, but also because uh, they're simply fighting for human rights or for women's rights. And they are arrested and persecuted because of that. Um, but I think that as Iranians, we are realizing more and more that uh, we have to really help and support each other uh, because we cannot achieve human rights and uh, freedom unless we all stand up for each other and be united and uh, work um, together in this path. Thank you.